St. Patrick's Cathedral occupies a magnificent position in Melbourne and is the largest church building in Australia. It is the Cathedral Church of the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Melbourne and the seat of its Archbishop. It was conferred the title and dignity of Minor Basilica in 1974 by Pope Paul VI. The church is located at Eastern Hill, just across St. Peter's Church. The cathedral was built in stages from 1858 to 1939 in Gothic Revival style. On the 4th of October 1848, when Dr. James Ali Pius Gould was appointed as the bishop of the recently created Melbourne Diocese. St. Francis Church was his cathedral church. A few years later, as the Catholic population of Melbourne City increased, for want of another church, an application for a grant of a church site was made to the government. In July 1848, land was sanctioned at Eastern Hill for a church. The land was part of St. Helio Estate, owned by Edward Kerr, which, when he died, became Crown property. It was only due to the persistence of Irish-Australian businessman and politician, Sir John O'Shaughnessy, that the government favoured the church for the land grant. A small weatherboard chapel already existed at the Eastern Hill Reserve, used for Sunday Mass, which became the first St. Patrick Church. The foundation stone for a new church was laid on 9 April 1850 by Bishop Dr. Gould. Gould did not have any plans to build a big Gothic structure, as Melbourne was still a little hamlet. The original budget for the church was £6,000. More than 2,000 people assembled there for the ceremony. Gold was discovered in Victoria the next year, and the building operations on St. Patrick came to a standstill due to the non-availability of tradespeople, and very little progress was made for the next two years. During this time, Bishop Gould and Dean Fitzpatrick were away in Europe, and Vicar General Dr. Gahagan was in charge of church construction. When the bishop returned in February 1853, Melbourne had already changed, with fortune seekers from all around the world arriving to try their luck at the goldfields. At the time of his departure to Europe, Melbourne was still a sleepy town with not much prospects ahead. Bishop Gould realised the inadequacy of building a small church for a fast-growing city. The bishop decided to take down what was already constructed and commence a new building with a new plan for a larger church. The building was in an advanced stage by then, with the high walls already standing. The bishop decided to pull down what was already built at a cost of £60,000 and start anew. Portions of the old building, like the columns and part of the aisle roofing, became part of the new design, and the estimated total cost of the new building was £200,000. For the next few years, funding issues slowed down the construction. In February 1858, the bishop called a general meeting of all interested parties to address the funding issue. Enthusiasm prevailed, and within two years, the first section of the church was completed and roofed. On the 14th of February 1858, this was blessed by Bishop Gould and it served as the first St. Patrick's Church at the site. In June 1858, before Gould left for his ad limina visit to the Vatican, he already took a decision to build a large cathedral at the site, and he delegated the responsibility of finalizing the plan and announcing it publicly to Rev. Fitzpatrick. Early in 1857, architect William Wilkinson Wardell arrived in Melbourne from England. By then, Wardell had already designed around 30 churches and other buildings in England. With his uncompromising love for Gothic structures, Wardell was a perfect choice for designing St. Patrick's Cathedral. At Gould's request, Wardell prepared a design for the church, and Fitzpatrick approved it in Gould's absence. In 1858, the contract was signed, and work began on the church. Fitzpatrick faced stiff criticism from many corners for committing to such a colossal building when a great deal of money was already spent on two churches in the location. But his perseverance made it possible. He faced a lack of interest from the public, which resulted in financial constraints for the project. On the 11th of June 1886, when Gould died, he lived to see his great cathedral take final shape. Beneath the pavement of the nearly finished chapel of Holy Souls, his mortal remains were reverently laid. 
On the 21st of January 1890, Reverend Fitzpatrick, who was known as the founder of St. Patrick's Cathedral, died peacefully. He was part of the building process for around 40 years. The high altar arrived in October 1896, made of emperor red marble manufactured at Farmer and Brindley's in London. The cathedral was consecrated on the 2nd of October 1897 by Bishop Corbett of Sale, and a formal opening took place on the 31st of October. The total expended on the cathedral till that date was £217,376. In the early 1900s, the discussion was of erecting the great main tower and the spire and the two frontal spires, and Archbishop Mannix took a personal interest in the project. Early in 1936, Archbishop Mannix instructed the architects to prepare a design for the remaining towers and spires and decided to build a new spire to a height of 340 feet, 90 feet more than the original design. The building was officially completed in 1939. The cathedral's original pipe organ was built in the late 1870s by Robert Mackenzie and completed in 1880 by George Fincham. The current installation built by George Fincham and Sons, Melbourne in 1962-64 incorporates a substantial part of the original. To prepare for the cathedral's centenary celebrations in 1997, the cathedral underwent significant conservation work in 1994 under the guidance of Forkinger Andronas architects and heritage consultants. The Pilgrim Way was created at the church ground in the late 1990s. Created by Green and Dale landscape architects, the Pilgrim Way, with a central concept of flowing water, has water cascading down the channel that divides the two sides of the stepped pathways over a selection of quotations that are cut with gold inlays into the bluestone structures. The church doors are open wide for everyone, symbolizing the Christian mission which invites people to gather, pray and proclaim the good news of Jesus to the ends of the earth. The cathedral is dedicated to St. Patrick, the pioneering Irish bishop who faithfully and courageously led the church in Ireland and who initiated many changes to that society. Cathedral also enjoys a rare distinction in design. The windows in the nave, unlike the usual stained glass style, are made of translucent alabaster that gives the body of the building a golden glow. The lay people who pray and celebrate the sacred mysteries at St. Patrick's are placed in a luminous clearing and bathed in a glorious tint. The dignity of their baptism, friendship with Christ and membership of his body is affirmed in this unique hue.